Hey everyone, Sweet Johnny Cage here, back with another guide for Death Stranding. This time I'm going to take you through order number three, which is the top secret cremation of the president's body. So, this is a pretty long order that you have to fulfill. There is no lost cargo along this route. You have one mission, that is to get the president's body to the incinerator, and then you have a submission at the end to escape, because you're going to run into some BTs. If you are looking for that portion, if you need help with that, check the video description for a timestamp and uh, you can just skip right to that. So, this is really like the last intro mission of the game. Uh, so this will be uh, more of like a commentary rather than a guide because it's so straightforward. Uh, you don't have to worry about setting up any tools. You don't have to worry about um, too tough of terrain. Uh, there are ropes and ladders set out for you by Igor, who is the gentleman who was unfortunately eaten by a BT in the previous mission, or rather uh, between the first and the second mission. Um, so he has set up some, some ropes and ladders for you to use to make your way up to the incinerator. And the incinerator is the building you see right in the center of the screen uh, behind that little mountain. So that's where we are headed. This is a rather nice mission. Uh, in the sense that you just get to be alone in this world with some really great music in the background. So, some tips if you'd like, as you're exiting the city, you can use a watchtower uh, or a lookout tower, which allows you to kind of scan the terrain in a much, uh, sort of like a, an eagle's nest view, or a crow's nest view, uh, like imagine if you're at the top of the ship. Uh, and. Uh, Normally, if you're using a watchtower, it will highlight any uh, lost cargo or any items or any resources on the ground. Um, but in this, it's really just going to show you uh, a couple ladders. I think maybe it sees one of the ropes, um, but I'm just going to skip it, honestly, because it's, it's very, very straightforward uh, doing this. Once you leave the city, you'll be able to, uh, I mean, you could always sprint, but you uh, Sprinting when you're outside of the city uses your stamina. So uh, I don't recommend sprinting with a body on your back because uh, the weight is rather unwieldy. And uh, in the first mission, when you were picking up all the lost cargo in addition to the four uh, smart, I think smart drugs, um, at the very end of that, you saw, at least in my guide, that I was starting to lose balance and you constantly have to press L2 and R2 to kind of uh, rock back and forth and adjust your weight, you're going to be doing that a lot with a body on your back. Uh, so as you can see there, I just set my compass. And like I said in the previous video, uh, the compass is able to set straight line paths. Um, you can follow it if you like, but it basically ignores any terrain risks. Um, it will go right up sheer cliffs. It'll go over uh, huge mountains. It does not care about terrain. So it's really just meant to be used as a guide. And oftentimes you can pretty much just ignore it. <laughs> um, at least you can in the, in the first several missions. So what we're doing over here is we're gonna head towards the river. And the reason for this is because uh, generally near rivers, uh, the terrain becomes a lot nicer. And it's pretty flat, it's relatively smooth. Uh, the inclines are not steep. And uh, oftentimes you can find ladders that are laid across the river to help you cross. And I just scanned the area and now there's a ladder icon just ahead of me. So that's where we're headed first. And as you get into this field, uh, the track Bones by Low Roar will start playing. Uh, I'm really hoping that I don't get a, a content ID on this video. Although the composer of this game, Ludwig Forsell, has put out a tweet today, uh, November 9th, or maybe he's on the 8th. It's pretty early in the morning right now. Uh, he put out a tweet saying that he is uh, working to make sure that no content creators get content ID'd uh, for any of the music in the game, which is awesome. It's something I wish uh, more creators did for every game. It, that's really nice of him. He didn't have to do that. Uh, so I'm pretty grateful, especially because the music in this game is really, really good. And, uh, you know, I'd, I'd hate to... Uh, like, you know, get a strike against my channel uh, for something that I can't exactly control and uh, it's for something that I like. So we are headed over to this ladder laid down by Igor and this is the guy who 
unfortunately got eaten by that BT in the first mission. So uh, we're using his path to get to the incinerator. If you like, you can like any uh, objects or signs that are dropped by NPCs or players. You do that by mashing the touchpad. I've managed to get like 52 likes on something. Um, I'm not sure if I'm mashing it too fast. You know, my mashing skills come from the original Metal Gear Solid uh, torture sequences, so I'm pretty good at them, uh, to quote Ocelot. And I uh, managed to get 52 on one, but ever since getting that first one at 52, I get on average 30. So let me know how many likes you get. So we're gonna keep on moseying on here, or moseying over here. Uh, we're gonna head over uh, to, to these little cliffs over here little rock formations. This reminds me of like pictures of Ireland, which I'm actually visiting uh, in January of next year. So kind of excited to take some comparison pictures for you. Uh, but this, I, to me, this mission is uh, sort of like a litmus test for the gameplay loop. Uh, you just travel this world almost exclusively alone, except for the people on your codec. Uh, you're just making deliveries. You're traversing this earth or this, you know, United States or United Cities of America uh, alone. And it's, it's a lonely experience, but it's a relatively beautiful world. The sound design is incredible. And you're just alone living in it. And, uh, you know, making deliveries, picking up resources and, and lost cargo, making other deliveries. And you're sort of getting drip fed the story uh, as you do all this. It's a, it's a fairly lonely experience. There's a lot of solitude. Uh, but if you can uh, realize that and appreciate that while doing this relatively long mission, I mean, with a cuts, with all the cutscenes, this mission is like 45 minutes long. So I'm cutting all that out. Uh, I'm just doing the gameplay sequences. And I'm actually going to cut this guide at the end because after you escape from the BTs and get back down the mountain, you just walk back to the city, so I'm not going to show you how to do that because it's pretty pretty self-explanatory. But if you can enjoy uh, this mission and this sort of gameplay, then I think you will enjoy the rest of this game. And I say that as somebody who is only on like the seventh or eighth uh, delivery mission uh, so far for me. But you know, the gameplay doesn't radically change too much, at least up until the point that I'm at. Um, so yeah, just keep that in mind. So we're gonna come across a rope here, and Sam is pretty brolic, and he's able to just free climb up that rope uh, with a body, a 50 kilogram body, uh, on his back, and uh, make his way up, so he, he's pretty jacked. Uh, there is an alternate path up this mountain. Uh, I find it a lot more treacherous, so I actually use it as the way down, so keep that in mind. You can go towards the right, but I feel like the game is just definitely guiding you to take this left path. Um, so just keep that in mind. If you want, you can go right. It's a lot harder. Um, just keep that in mind. All right. So poor Igor, he got eaten. We're just going to keep using uh, the tools that he has left for us to make our way up to this incinerator. Well, we're going to like this as many times as we can before climbing it. Managed to get 15 on that one. Got some gorgeous lens flare. Some god rays coming on down. So once you make your way up that ladder, you can start hopping up this terrain here. Uh, this is where things can get a little tricky, a little treacherous. You want to make sure you're holding L2 and R2 to make yourself stable. Uh, you want to do your best not to slide down the cliff, like I just did. Uh, the president's body can take damage, and you can lose points for that, so you got to be very careful. I mean, she is your mother, after all. You want to take care of her. All right, so once you make your way up here, there's a little bit further to go until we make it to the incinerator. Keep on moving forward. And then it's just beyond these cliffs here. So you gotta make your way up there. In my experience, this is like the third time I had to do this mission because of some footage problems I was having. Um, if you're a subscriber of this channel, you'll know that I uh, mentioned that I'd be doing this uh, guide series in 4K HDR, and this video is not available in HDR, and that's because I had a lot of problems with footage. Um, so these guides are just going to be plain old 4K, 
I don't understand how I fell right there. I feel like I slipped on nothing, but, you know, it happens. Uh, but, yeah, anyway, we're just going to keep on moving. This game does look absolutely gorgeous in HDR if you're able to play it in that, in that format. All right, so I'm going to hop over here, up this final little cliff. And if you'll notice, there's a lot of context here. So this is an incinerator, and you may be wondering, how is this incinerator getting... Uh, like power for the flames and it's actually those pipes to the left are gas lines and I find that to be such an incredible little detail that uh, the team behind this game decided to include that, that's serious world building right there you can see gas tanks there as well as a gas pipeline that's just awesome anyway enough gushing about this game uh, we're going to uh, go to the marker right in the middle here. I'm just now noticing those ladders in the background. I'm not super sure what those are about. Anyway, we're going to go to the marker, and then we're going to drop off the president's body. And after we do that and watch a pretty good cutscene, uh, we are ambushed by BTs. So we need to uh, skirt around them and escape from the incinerator building. So I'll be the first to admit that I'm not amazing at escaping BTs. And my own failure is going to produce uh, an extra little tutorial for you in this guide. So, the way the Odra deck works, which is the sensor on your shoulder, is when it turns orange, that means that a BT is very close to you. And the Odra deck will always point in the general direction of where the nearest BT is. So, when you notice it's searching around, it is pointing towards BTs. And then when it turns orange and starts whirring really fast, like it's doing now, although I'm not realizing it, that means that there is a BT very close by. So when that happens, you have a couple choices. You can either try to sit still and then scan to see exactly where the BT is, or you can hold your breath and try to move away. Uh, right there, I just narrowly avoided one, but I am going to get caught by one in a second. Uh, so that's going to happen, but I am going to escape. I'm not going to get a, a non-game over. I still haven't actually, you know, gotten to that point in this game. I've never gotten fully caught by a BT, so I don't really know what happens just yet. Uh, don't spoil it in the comments for anybody who, who doesn't know. So, we're going to get caught by one here in a second. And when that happens, uh, some people are going to come out of, like, the ink that uh, starts surrounding you. And then what you need to do is you need to mash square to uh, escape uh, that little pool. So here you can see it catches me. The earth starts to transform a little. We can see all these people trying to grab me, bring me under. And all we got to do is we got to mash square and then uh, keep moving. If this happens while you have cargo on your backpack, you're almost guaranteed to drop it. Uh, or at least some of it. And if that happens, then you gotta just run away and come back for it later. Uh, so luckily, I was able to escape that, and our destination is right over here. It is a rope that Igor planted for us. So once you get over here, uh, the BTs don't come over here, so you're pretty safe, uh, but you do want to grab the rope and then begin rappelling down the cliff. So that's basically how you escape. You just wanna go to the left, avoid the BTs as best you can, I'm imagining that you probably could just sprint all the way to here and, and be fine. Um, I'm just guessing. Um, I mean, it's an intro mission. I'm sure they're not going to make you, you know, uh, get, get whatever the this game's version of Game Over is. I know there's no actual Game Over, but whatever happens going to, to the other side with the BTs. Um, anyway, once you reach the bottom, you want to then carefully uh, slide down the rest of the cliff face. Like I said, this is an alternate path up to the uh, incinerator. I don't recommend taking it. It looks really insane, um, but this is the best way down, in my opinion. So once you make your way through and uh, you're clear of the BTs, your order deck will uh, just go away, and then you'll get a notification about enemy-induced adrenaline rushes. Basically what this means is when you're surrounded by enemies or BTs, uh, your adrenaline spikes, but when you leave, your adrenaline shoots back down, and then uh, you need to use your monster energy drink canteen to restore your stamina. So you gotta drink that monster energy drink. I'm gonna cut the guide here, but all you gotta do is you gotta 
walk back to the city and that's it. Uh, it's pretty easy to get an S rank on this one. If you guys have any questions, please feel free to leave a comment. I'll do my best to help you out. If you're looking for more guides for Death Stranding, please subscribe to the channel so you get alerted when new videos go live. If you like this content a whole lot, please consider becoming a channel member by clicking the blue join button below this video. Don't forget to follow on Twitter and on Twitch. And as always, I'll be Johnny Cage. Thanks so much for watching, and I'll see you next time. Bye-bye.